Hello and welcome to this tutorial of Keystone 2. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to get the most out of it and make it the ideal companion for your keyframes and layers in After Effects. If you're already a Keystone user, you can see that the interface is very similar to the previous version, but there's one big new feature. This layers menu with new functions dedicated to layers. You can return to the keyframe functionalities by clicking on keys, and if you have a large enough screen, you can also expand the interface to display all the functionalities at once, further reducing the number of clicks required to use Keystone 2. And now, without further ado, let's start with the keyframes functions. The first part allows you to color keyframes in one click, and I specify that this functionality is only available from After Effects 2022 and above. To color keyframes, simply select them and click on the color of your choice. For example, I can decide to color all the intro keyframes with the same color and the outro ones with another. You can also easily reselect keyframes by control clicking on the color of your choice, which is very useful when you have a lot of keyframes spread over multiple layers. You can also add keyframes of another color to the selection by shift clicking and remove keyframes of a certain color by alt clicking. You can change the label colors in the After Effects Preferences menu by going to Edit, Preferences, and Labels. If you're paying attention, you may notice that some of these colors are not present in the Keystone 2 interface. Indeed, in the Preferences menu of Keystone 2, you can decide which colors to display in the interface. I personally decided to hide the darkest colors as I find they are not suitable for use with keyframes because there's not enough contrast with the timeline background color. Next is the Align section, which lets you align keyframes to the CTI or to the boundaries of your layers. I select some keyframes, click on the first icon, and my keyframes are automatically aligned to the CTI. You can see that the keyframes have retained their offset within the layer. This is because, by default in Keystone, a single click activates the layer mode. If I select keyframes from multiple layers and click on Align, you can see that the keyframes are grouped by layer. If you wish to align all keyframes of all properties on the CTI, you need to activate the property mode with the Alt-Click shortcut. This time, all the first keyframes of all properties are aligned to the CTI. There is also the global mode, which allows you to maintain the offset of all selected keyframes regardless of their layer. For example, I select all these keyframes and shift-click to activate the global mode, which aligns the entire block of keyframes to the CTI. These modes, activated by hotkeys, are very important as they apply to a large part of Keystone's functionalities. To continue with the alignment functions, the second option is almost identical. But this time the alignment is performed on the last keyframe in the group. And finally, the last two options allow you to align keyframes to the endpoint or outpoint of their respective layer. The next part allows you to stagger keyframes from one another. For these functions, I need to specify a value and choose a time unit between frames and seconds. For this example, I choose five frames. Select these keyframes, then click on the first icon. It creates a descending offset, and as before, by default, Keystone has grouped the keyframes by layer. If I wish to stagger the keyframes by property, I press Alt and click. On the other hand, this button creates ascending staggers. And this one creates a different random stagger every time we click on it. For each of these three functions, the stagger starts at the first keyframe in the group, so there's no need to use the CTI. In the next section, you can stretch groups of keyframes. This has the effect of slowing down or speeding up the animations concerned. As with the stagger functions, there is a field for specifying a value, as well as three units, percent, frames, or seconds. 100% corresponds to the current state of the keyframe group, and nothing happens if I click on the icons. If I set this to 200%, it doubles the duration of the keyframe group in the timeline and slows down the animation. If I want to speed up the animation, I indicate a value lower than 100%. For example, a value of 50% will have the length of the animation. I can use the global mode by using the shift-click shortcut, which stretches all the selected keyframes as a single block. If I want to affect each property individually, I use Alt-Click. You can also specify a fixed value with the units frames and seconds. For example, I want this group of keyframes to last precisely two seconds. So I write two, change the unit, and click on the first button. If I enable property mode with alt-click, each of the keyframe groups selected on the properties are now two seconds long. The second button stretches from the last keyframe. This is very useful for outrow animations. 
and for the last button, stretch is applied from the CTI. The last feature is a little different, as it allows keyframes to be distributed evenly. For this example, I want to have 20 frames between each of my keyframes, so I change the value, select my keyframes and click on the icon. I now have exactly 20 frames between each keyframe. The shift section is very simple and allows you to shift selected keyframes by 1 or 10 frames. Double arrows shift 10 frames left or right in the timeline, while single arrows shift keyframes one frame at a time for maximum precision. You can of course shift keyframes natively in After Effects, but the great thing about Keystone's shift functionality is that it doesn't destroy your motion curves like After Effects does. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you right now. I activate the graph editor and move this keyframe with my mouse. It completely destroys the carefully crafted tangents of this animation. In contrast, if I use Keystone 2's functions, you can see immediately that it perfectly preserves the motion curve of the keyframes. It's important to note that this curve and tangent preservation works with all Keystone 2 features. For example, you can align this keyframe here, or stretch these other keyframes, and in either case, the overall shape of the motion curve is well preserved. If you're a user of the first version of Keystone, you probably have noticed these three icons, which are one of the big new features of Keystone 2. These options allow you to link or unlink keyframes and layers. By default, when the first option is activated, keyframes are not linked to layers, meaning that layers don't move when keyframes are manipulated. If I align these keyframes with Keystone, the layers don't move. This is After Effects native behavior if I decide to move these same keyframes with my mouse. However, this behavior is problematic in certain situations. Here I've already created several animations on different pre-comps, and I want to stagger the intro keyframes of each of these pre-comp. This works very well, but I would have liked the layers to follow the keyframes, and here the layers have remained aligned with the first frame of the composition. Once you're in this configuration, there's unfortunately no easy way of doing this natively in After Effects, so you have to manually shift the layers one by one, and then reshift the keyframes precisely. If you have a lot of layers, this process can take several minutes. I'm going to avoid this by canceling the stagger and clicking on the second icon. It means that the selected keyframes are linked to the layers and points. I click on the stagger function again, and this time the layers and points are linked to the selected keyframes. If I cancel and start again, you can also see that this does not affect the unselected keyframes, which retain their original position in the timeline. The third option links the out point of the layers with the selected keyframes. I decide to align these keyframes with the CTI, and this correctly moves the layer out point. As you can see, these options are very powerful, and it's a huge time saver not to have to manually adjust the layers in point or out point, and it's compatible with all these features. Next are the duplicate and flip options. I simply select a group of keyframes and click on duplicate. Duplication is performed at CTI level on the first keyframe in the group. The second option lets you duplicate and flip at the same time. This is ideal for quickly creating outrow animations. The third option flips keyframes. By default, a single click activates the layer mode and preserves the offset of keyframes belonging to the same layers. If I want to reverse the keyframes of each property individually, I need to use the property mode with the Alt-Click shortcut. Now I select keyframes on several layers and click on the icon. With a single click and the layer mode we get this result. We can also invert the entire block of keyframes with the global mode with Shift-Click. The next section allows you to copy and paste keyframes from one layer to other layers, with options not available in After Effects. In this example, I have several layers slightly offset from each other. They have the same animation and the same keyframes. I want to continue this animation, and I'm going to create two other keyframes randomly. By default in After Effects, to duplicate this animation on the other layers, I have no choice but to copy and paste these keyframes, but then they end up aligned on the CTI, and I have to move them manually, which is a real pain when you have a lot of layers. I undo this. And with Keystone 2, I simply copy these keyframes. Make sure and point is selected. Then select the other layers and click on Paste. The keyframes are automatically placed in the right place on their respective layers, which makes things a lot easier and saves a lot of time. In situations where you wish to update animations that are not aligned with the layer edges, you can use the Key Selection option. For example, I can offset these keyframes 
change their color. I copy the entire animation with Keystone. And then, after selecting the key selection option and the other keyframes, I paste them with Keystone. This is a very effective method when the keyframes are neither aligned with the edges of the layer, nor with each other. Finally, there's the relative paste option. Up to now, I've used the absolute paste option, which means that pasted keyframes have exactly the same values as copied keyframes. If I use the absolute paste option on position properties, all layers end up in exactly the same place. This is perfectly normal because the keyframes have the same values, but it's not usually what you want in this kind of situation. Now, if I use relative pasting on the last layers, you can see that this transfers the layer movement while preserving the original position of the selected layers. Now let's take a closer look at the last three features of the keys panel. By manipulating keyframes, especially with stretch functions, keyframes can end up between two frames instead of being correctly aligned. This feature allows you to correct this in just one click. If I zoom into the timeline, you can see that these keyframes are between two frames. So all I have to do is select the keyframes and click this button to have them automatically aligned with the nearest frame. The next button is used to define a constant speed between two keyframes. For example, in this scene, I'd like to soften the curve between the two keyframes in the middle. You can try to align the tangents manually, but it's time consuming and very approximate. On top of that, you have to start all over again when you move the keyframes in the timeline. Keystone 2 solves this problem extremely easily because all I have to do is select the two keyframes, click on the icon, and that's it. The best part is that once I've used this feature, Keystone 2 will maintain this constant speed between these two keyframes if I use another feature of the extension. For example, if I decide to align the last two keyframes on the CTI, the alignment is maintained. This may seem perfectly normal to you, but it's not After Effects default behavior at all. If I move these keyframes manually, you can see that this destroys the constant speed. I reuse the option to obtain a constant speed, and this time, I move the keyframes using keystone shifting options. Whatever the direction, the constant speed is perfectly preserved, a real-time saver and far more efficient than After Effects native behavior. The last feature in this section allows you to automatically delete keyframes located between other selected keyframes. This can happen, for example, when you stretch a group of keyframes. In this scene, if I stretch these keyframes to 200%, I end up with overlapping keyframes that I want to delete. Just click on this icon and the work is done. Now that we've seen all the keyframe features, let's move on to the Layers panel, Keystone 2's biggest new feature. The interface is very similar to the Keys panel, with icons that are easy to read and directly accessible with one click. As in the Keys panel, color labels can be applied to layers using Keystone. Simply select the layers and click on one of the color squares. Let's move on to the alignment functions. You can align the layers in point on the CTI, the layers out point on the CTI. You can also align the layers to the earliest in point of the selection and to the latest out point. In the same way as for the keys panel functions, there are several modes for certain functions. By default, the layer mode is activated. If I click on this icon, all layers are aligned with the CTI but you can also activate the global mode with shift clicking to treat all layers as a single block. As you can see, this preserves the offset between layers. The next section allows you to apply an offset between layers. You enter a value and choose a unit between frames, seconds, and minutes, then decide whether you want a descending, ascending, or a random stagger. This last icon allows you to keep the existing staggering. For example, I've just randomly staggered the layers by two frames, but I'd like to increase it to four frames. If I click on this button again, it will apply a new random stagger when I simply wanted to increase the existing stagger. So I cancel this action and click on this last icon instead. As you can see, Keystone has automatically determined the layer order and is applying the new stagger correctly. There may also be situations where some layers are aligned. For example, if I duplicate this layer, I increase the stagger to six frames and click again on this last icon. You can see that Keystone has correctly preserved this alignment between these layers, while modifying the stagger between all the other layers. Below this is the stretch section, which allows you to act on the properties of the same name in the timeline. If these properties do not appear, simply right-click on this bar, go to Columns, then click on Stretch, 
Stretch can be applied from the layer in point, the layer out point, or the CTI. The default unit is percent, but you can also specify a number of frames, seconds, or minutes. In this scene, for example, each layer has a different duration. If I want each layer to last five seconds, Keystone 2 automatically calculates the percentage to apply to each layer. Now let's take a closer look at the three options that affect all these functions. By default in After Effects, when you move layers, the keyframes are linked and move along with the layer. Thanks to Keystone 2, you can now dissociate layers from their keyframes. For example, in this scene, I want to align these layers while preserving the position of the keyframes in the timeline. Simply activate this option and click on Align. This second option links only selected keyframes to their respective layers. Here, I want to shift the layers while retaining the intro animations. I select the appropriate keyframes, click on the option to link the layers with the selected keyframes and shift the layers. As you can see, the unselected keyframes remain in place, while the selected layers and keyframes have been moved. And finally, trim options based on keyframes. I select these layers, click on the last icon, and the layer length is automatically adjusted in relation to the first and last keyframes. For these functions, you can choose between start time and in point, which are very important options for precomps. Here, if I select in point and trim these precomp, we can see that it simply cuts the layer at the first keyframe. Now, if I select start time with these other precomps, it moves the layers entirely without affecting the keyframes. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thanks for sticking around until the end, and don't hesitate to leave a message if you have any questions or suggestions for new features.